Swati and I welcome you all to this session where we will be discussing computer capsule for IBPS PO mains. Yes, as not much time is left for IBPS PO mains, you must step up your preparation. In mains, you will be having four sections, quant, reasoning, general awareness and computer knowledge. And each section will have its individual cutoff. And there will also be a cutoff for the paper as a whole. So, along with other sections, also prepare computers as you would not want to get stressed a day before the examination. For preparing computer, you must know the relevant topics from which the questions will be asked in your examination. So, without any further ado, let's start this session. So, students, this section, Computer Knowledge, in IBPS PO mains examination will have 20 questions and the time allotted for this section is just 10 minutes. While studying computer awareness for any banking examination, it is very important for you to know that what all topics you need to study. As computers is a vast subject and each and every topic that you are seeing here is a subject in itself. So for banking examination, you need not go into the vast detail, just a brief introduction of the topics and some general terms and their knowledge will be sufficient. So here, I will discuss some topics that are relevant for this examination. The first we have is history and generations of computers. From history and generation, many questions are asked. That is why this is an important topic. Next we have is types of computers and then hardware and I.O. devices. This is again a very important topic. And then we have software and operating system. Then we have computer languages and then there is memory management. Memory management is again an important topic as many questions have been asked. Then we have number system. Some students tend to leave this topic but you should always learn to work out of your comfort zone. What if you encounter a question of number system in this examination? It is very easy and you can easily solve those questions so don't leave it. Then after number system we will be having logic gates, a brief introduction of logic gates. Then there is computer network and internet. These two topics are again important for your examination. After these topics, we will be having computer security and then there is Microsoft Office which is a very important topic for this banking examination. Then there will be a brief discussion of DBMS and some terms related to it. So let's start with the first topic that is history of computers. In history of computers, you need to know some important personalities and some important inventions. Charles Babbage. Charles Babbage is known as the father of computer and a question can be there in your examination. For example, who is the father of computer? Then the answer will be Charles Babbage. Charles Babbage introduced difference engine and analytical engine. You must Remember these terms that Charles Babbage, he is known as the father of computer and he introduced the difference engine and analytical engine. Next we have ENIAC. This term is an abbreviation for electronic numerical integrator and computer. It was the first digital computer. So if I ask you which among the following was the first digital computer? Then if ENIAC is given in the option, ENIAC will be the answer. ENIAC was invented by J. Presper Eckert and John W. Markley. Then next coming over to UNIVAC. John W. Markley and J. Presper Eckert were also inventor of UNIVAC. So this was all about history of computers in brief. Let us move on to our next topic. So next we have generation of computers. In generation of computers as you can clearly see in this table that there are five generation of computers with the fifth generation is the one on which we are still working on. And in this table we have given you the circuitry, 
memory capacity, processing speed, programming languages used in those generation and some examples. Let us come to the first generation. In first generation, the circuitry were vacuum tubes and in second generation, they were transistors. So on it was integrated chips in the third generation and microprocessors in the fourth generation. You can have a question in your examination like transistors were used as circuitry parts in which generation? Then your answer will be second generation. Then the next important thing is the programming language that was being used in those generation. Assembly language was used in first generation majorly. Then in second generation, they started using high level languages like Fortran, COBOL and Algol. C and C++ were majorly used in the third generation. Likewise, C, C++ and Java, all these are high level languages. They were also used in fourth generation. And with the fifth generation on which scientists are still working, they are using high level languages and neural networks. So friends, next topic that we have is types of computers. See, types of computers or classification of computers is not so direct. As computers are classified based on some broad categories like computational method, size and capability, and purpose. So classification of computers based on computational method will be digital, analog, and then hybrid. And based on size and capability will be supercomputers, mainframe computers, mini computers, and then microcomputers. Likewise, classification of computer based on their purpose or use will be general purpose computers and then special purpose computers. So let us see what is analog computer. Analog computers, they work on variable voltage or variable aspects. Then we have digital computer. Digital computer accepts binary information or we can say digital computer processes binary information. They convert the characters into binary code. Next we have hybrid computers. Hybrid computers use combined features of the analog computers and the digital computers. Then after hybrid, let's move on to the classification based on size and capability. Now here we have microcomputers. They are small and inexpensive computers and they are designed for personal or office use. You are using microcomputers in form of laptops or desktops. Before microcomputers, there were mini computers. They are powerful as compared to microcomputers and they can be used as server and capable of supporting 2 to 200 users. Mainframe computers. Now what is mainframe computers? They have very high memory and processing speed and they are used as servers. So if I ask you a question, which among the following can be used as a server? And in options, I give you two options, mainframe and microcomputers. Then your answer should be mainframe computers. Then after mainframe, we'll be discussing supercomputers. Supercomputers are the fastest computer in their generation. They are capable of complex number solving capabilities and scientific research. They are used for scientific research, specific research, weather forecasting, weapon designing, etc. Now let us see some supercomputers. CDC 6600 was the first successful supercomputer. So it can be asked in your examination that which among the following was the first successful supercomputers? Then the answer will be CDC 6600. Sunway Taihu Light of China is the fastest supercomputer in the world. Param 8000 is India's first supercomputer. See, these terms are very important for examination point of view. You can have a question in your examination, for example, which among the following was the first supercomputer developed by CDAC Pune? Then you should answer Param 8000. Coming to the next, Shasra T is considered India's fastest supercomputer. Do not get confused between these two terms, Param and Shasrati. Param 8000 was India's 
first supercomputer and Shastra T is India's fastest supercomputer. So the next section that we have is hardware and I.O. devices. I.O. devices here means input output device. Input output device. Now first of all, let us know what is meant by data. A data is a collection of raw facts and figures. Then we have motherboard. Now what is a motherboard? Personal computers use a number of chips mounted on main circuit board called motherboard. It is a physical arrangement in a computer that contain computers basic circuitry and components. Next we have output device. What is an output device? Well, you can see it in a diagrammatic form over here that user provides the input to the CPU or the central processing unit and the central processing unit does all the processing that it needs and then it produces the output and that output is given to the user through an output device. CPU, central processing unit, it is the brain of your computer. Now, if you encounter a question in your examination that which among the following components is also known as the brain of the computer, then the answer will be CPU, Central Processing Unit. Control unit is a component of the computer CPU that directs operation of the processor. So control unit tells the memory and ALU and input output device how to respond and when to respond. It controls the operations. Then we have arithmetic logic unit or ALU. It is a digital circuit used to perform arithmetic and logic operations. See all the addition, multiplication, division, subtraction, in short all the arithmetic operation and all the logical operations are performed by the ALU. Then we have memory in the diagram and we'll discuss about the memory unit and types of memory in a complete other section. Now what is instruction execution? See the programs that are needed to be executed are actually sets of instructions and they are stored in the memory. Now the CPU needs to execute these sets or steps of instructions and CPU does so with the help of registers. In those registers we have accumulator register, memory address register, program counter and instruction registers. There are many more but you need to get the brief knowledge of these registers. Now what do we have next? Let us see some input devices and output devices. What are input devices? Like I've told you earlier that the user gives the input to the computer or the CPU through an input device. Now examples of some input devices are a keyboard. A keyboard is a typewriter style device and you all must be familiar with the keyboard. Now in keyboard there are some special keys like function keys, toggle keys, numerical keypad, you must know what these are. In a keyboard, the keys labeled from F1 to F12 are the functional keys. They have some special function. The keyboard which are most commonly used are based on QWERTY. What is meant by QWERTY? If you look carefully at a keyboard, the first row of the alphabetical series is Q, W, E, R, T, Y. This design is called QWERTY. Next there are toggle keys. See caps lock, number lock. These keys are called toggle keys because they change their function from one state to another. So when you press your caps lock, you can either write in capital letters and when you press your caps lock again, that is you switches it off, you can then again write in small letters. Numeric keypad. Numeric keypad is located on the right hand side of your keyboard. Then what is the modifier key? It is the special key on the computer keyboard that temporarily modifies the normal action of another key. So if you press shift or alt or control, it does not trigger any action by themselves. But if you press shift with a combination of other key, 
it might perform some action or some other action. Then the next important term that we have is optical character recognition or OCR. It is used to scan the document containing text. There were also a question in a recent examination regarding point of sale terminal. So let us see what this point is. A point of sale terminal is an electronic device used to process card payments at retail locations. So if you have used your debit or credit card, you might have seen that they use a device to complete the payment procedure. That is called as the POS terminal or point of sale terminal. Then the next device that we have is a printer. A printer is an output device that prints the information. The printed information is known as the hard copy and the output that is displayed on the screen is known as the soft copy. Pages per minute is the unit used to count the speed of the printer. Now let us see what are the classification or categorization of printer. So printer are categorized as impact and non-impact printers. Impact printers. As the name specifies itself that impact printers create image by using some mechanism to physically press inked ribbon against the paper. Some types of impact printer are dot matrix, daisy wheel, line printers, drum printer, chain printer and band printer. Then we have non-impact printer. As the name specifies non-impact printer, they do not touch the paper while creating an image. Remember, impact printer used a mechanism that physically pressed an ink ribbon, whereas non-impact printers do not touch the paper while creating an image. Some types of non-impact printer are inkjet printer, laser printer and thermal printer. Now if I ask you that daisy wheel is which kind of printer? A. Impact. B. Non-impact. Then you can answer that it is a kind of impact printer. Next output device that we have is a plotter. A plotter is an output device that interprets command from computer to make line drawings on the paper. A plotter is different from a printer. It draws vector graphics. Then we have UPS or uninterruptible power supply. See UPS is a device that allows your computer keep running when the power connection is lost for a short period of time. Then we have very important output device that is the monitor which is a TV display attached to a computer through which you see the output. So these were all the output and input device along with the computer hardware. Now let us see computer software and operating system. As we know that the hardware were tangible components, so the software is the intangible component of a computer system. A set of instruction that tells the computer about the task that needed to be performed, that is known as the software. There's another term called program. A program is a set of instruction which controls the sequence of operations. You can see a chart over here in which we have done the categorization of computer software. So we have categorized or computer software is categorized in three parts. Utility software, application software and system software. Then let us have a look at the operating system. What is operating system? It is a set of program that help in controlling and managing the hardware and software resources of a computer system. See operating system is the platform upon which the other application softwares will work. Some major functions of operating system are process management, memory management, file management, security, command and interpretation, resource allocation. These are some major functions of operating system. Now let us have a look at what all types of operating system are there. We need not go into the detailed discussion of type of operating system, but you need to know some basic types of operating system and what is the difference between them. The first we have the batch processing system. Here data and program were needed to be executed and processed 
as bundles that were collected as batch and executed together. Then there are multi-programming operating system. Multi-programming as the name specifies allowed two or more programs to be executed simultaneously. There were single user operating system which were designed for single use only and distributed operating system. Distributed operating system manages a collection of independent computers and make them look like that they are running as a single computer. Next we have RTOS and then there are time sharing system. The next type is very common or familiar with all of you. Mobile operating system. Mobile operating system is operating system customized to run on mobile and tablets. Now let us see some important mobile operating system. Windows 10 mobile is the latest name for Microsoft's phone and tablet operating system and Google's latest version of Android is Nougat and iOS that is iPhone operating systems latest version is iOS 10. So friends let us revise that what all are the types of OS that we have studied that is batch processing operating system, multi-programming, single user, distributed, real-time, time sharing and then there was mobile OS. So these were all about the operating system and computer software. Now let us have a look at computer language. Broadly we have categorized computer languages in four kinds that is the low level, the machine language, assembly language and high level language. C, C++, Java, all these are some example of high level programming language. Low level programming language are easier to understand by the processor. And machine language is in form of binary that is 0 and 1. High level programming language is user friendly. It is easier for the user or the programmer to code in these language and to understand it. Now what is a language processor or translator? See, programmers write their program in high level languages because it is easier to understand and code in these language. But the computer, it does not understand the high level language. So obviously we need an intermediary program that translates what the programmer has coded into the computer's understandable instruction. So here we have loader, linker, interpreter, compiler and assembler. A compiler translates high level language to machine language as a whole and at the end it displays the error or the list of errors. Whereas the interpreter is slow because it converts the program line by line. So next we have memory management. You can see a table over here. Let's understand its content. A bit, it is a short form for binary digit and 8 bit equals to one byte. A byte is hence also known as an octet. Then 1024 byte are equal to one kilobyte. Similarly 1024 KB or kilobyte are equal to one megabyte. You can have a question in your examination. For example, what does 1024 GB equals to? and in options they can give you 1 GB, 1 TB, 1 PB or 1 EB. Then the answer should be 1024 GB equals to 1 terabyte. Memory or computer memory is basically classified as primary memory or secondary or auxiliary memory and primary memory is further classified into cache memory and main memory that includes RAM, ROM. And secondary or auxiliary memory includes magnetic tapes, optical disk, flash memory that is our print drives or memory card. Then we have the primary storage which is also known as the main memory and it is the area in the computer in which data is stored for quick access by the computer's processor. Then there is cache memory that is smaller and faster and secondary memory. Remember, secondary memory is a kind of non-volatile memory, whereas primary memory is a kind of volatile storage. Now, what is meant by these two terms, volatile or non-volatile? This means that when the power is lost, 
a volatile memory's content can also be lost. Whereas a secondary memory, which is non-volatile, with the loss of power, it its content will be unharmed. Then ROM is abbreviation for read-only memory, and it is a storage medium used in computer and other electronic devices. ROM is non-volatile. That means its content are retained even if the power is switched off. Types of ROM include PROM, EPROM, and EE. PROM. Next we have RAM or Random Access Memory. Random Access Memory or RAM allows computer to store data for immediate manipulation and to keep a track of what is being currently processed. RAM is referred to as volatile memory. That means its content will be lost when the power is turned off. There are two types of RAM, static RAM and dynamic RAM. Other classification of memory is based on their material. Like there is a semiconductor memory, that means the material used in construction of these kind of memory is semiconductor. There is magnetic memory, optical memory. And if I ask you what is a common example of optical memory, then the answer is DVD, Blu-ray disc. Next topic we have is bus. What is a bus? In computing, it is a set of physical connections, that means cables, printed circuit, etc., which can be shared by multiple hardware components in order to communicate with each other. There are three kinds of bus, that is the address bus, the data bus, and the control bus. Let us move on to our next topic, that is number system. Many students feel that this is a complex topic, but actually it can be really easy if you know some simple tricks or formulas. Let us understand what is meant by radix or base in a number system. Base is the number of unique digits including zero used to represent numbers in the positional numeral system. Now to understand this in an easier way, if I tell you what is the base of a decimal number system, then that would be base 10. Similarly, for binary, it is base 2. For octal, it is base 8. Let us see this table. In this table, we have shown decimal equivalence, binary equivalence, octal equivalence, and hexadecimal equivalence of same numbers. So, 0, as we know, is a 0 in decimal in binary. This is a 4-bit binary code. In binary, it is also represented as 0. Then in octal, octal is usually represented by 3-bit, that is 0, 0, 0. And for hexadecimal, that is also a 0. In decimal number system, as it is base 10 number system, we have 10 unique symbols from 0 to 9. And in binary, we only have two unique symbols, that is 0 and 1. And in octal, we have unique symbols from 0 to 7, that is 8 unique symbols. And in hexadecimal number system, we have symbols from 0 to F. From 0 to F, there are a total of 16 unique symbols. Now let us have a look at the conversion from one number system to another number system. The first conversion is hexadecimal to binary. If you have to convert a hexadecimal number, for example, 1A2, which is a hexadecimal number, to its binary equivalent, you can refer to this table. As 1 in binary is represented as 0001, and A, which is a decimal equivalent of 10 in binary is represented as 1010 and 2 is represented as 0010. Hence, 1A2, which is of base 16 in binary will be this number. Now, if we have to convert from decimal to binary, that is we have taken 75, which is a decimal number, and I ask you to convert into binary, you just have to divide 75 by 2 and write down its remainder. Then 
you have to write down its remainder in this fashion. Then after writing down its remainder, you will get this number, which is the binary equivalent of 75. Now, if you have to convert any base number system to decimal, there's one simple method to convert any base number system to decimal number system. It is that you will write down the digit and then multiply its base raised to the power of base place. For example, let us take the same digit. one. A2 which is a hexadecimal number and we have to convert into a binary number. So because it is a hexadecimal number its base is 16. Now starting from 2 we will multiply 2 to 16 raised to the power of 0. Then we will add 10 into 16 raised to the power of 1 then there will be 1 into 16 to the power of 2 and the equivalent that we will get is 418. Let us revise it again. We had 1, we had A and 2. This was a hexadecimal number. You can write down positions over here. 0, 1 and 2. Now what you will do is simply 1 into 16 to the power of 2 plus A which is equivalent for 10 into 16 to the power of 1 and then add 2 into 16 to the power of 0 and you'll get your answer. Now if I ask you to convert a binary number 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0 to its decimal equivalent, what will you do? For an easier way, you can write down 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. That means it will be 1 multiplied by 2 raised to the power of 5. Why 2? Because it was a binary number with base 2. Like we had in this section the hexadecimal number with base 16. So we multiplied it with 16. Hence we will multiply this with 2. And similarly completing the whole process you will get your equivalent that will be 54. Now if you have to convert an octal number to binary number, what will you do? You simply write down 3-bit binary equivalent and for this you can refer to the table above. And now for conversion of octal to hexadecimal, see there is no direct way of conversion of octal to hexadecimal. You have to first convert to binary and then you will convert to the hexadecimal number. So this was all about the number conversion. Let us now move on to the logic gates. You just need to know some basic information of logic gates like AND logic gate is represented by this symbol and OR logic gate is represented by this symbol. And you can also learn the truth table. Don't take chances. They might ask you any question in the examination. Then we have NOT logic gate and all these were some basic logic gate. And in universal logic gates, there is NAND and NOR. Then we have exclusive gates. Exclusive gates are derived from of the basic ones. We have exclusive OR and exclusive NOR. Now one very important topic, computer network. So students, in computer network, a network is categorized as LAN, MAN and WAN, where LAN is abbreviation for local area network, MAN stands for metropolitan area network and WAN is wide area network. See LAN pertain to a lesser geographical location that is within a building or a home network, whereas MAN is a larger network that usually spans over several buildings and WAN as the name specified itself is a larger area network that is a wide area network. Now let us have a look at some networking devices. Modem, hub, switch, all these are networking devices. And modem stands for modulator, demodulator. Then there is a repeater, router and gateway. Switch, it works on the data link layer. Now what is data link layer? We will get to know that when we will see OSI model or layers of OSI model. Next we have a repeater. Repeater operates at physical layer. It is also a layer of OSI model. Then we have a router. It works at the network layer. 
and it is used to connect different networks that have different architecture and protocols. Now, if you see a question in your examination that which among the following device is used to connect different networks that have different architecture, then you can answer that is a router. Then we have gateway. It operates in all layer of network architecture. Now you can have a question in your examination that which among the following devices operate on all layers of network architecture, router, repeater or gateway? Then the answer will be gateway. Then there's a bridge. Bridge is used to connect two LANs, that is two local area network with same standard but different type of cable. After bridge, let us see these versions of IP, IPv4 and IPv6. See, IP or internet protocol versions are IPv4 and IPv6. IP addresses of version 6 are classified as unicast, multicast and anycast. So, if there is a question that anycast is an example or classification of which kind of IP address, then the answer will be IPv6. Coming to IPv4, it is divided into these five classes A, B, C and D. They can ask you their ranges also, that is why we have included the ranges in this capsule. So you need to see that from where class A ranges till where. Then after IP addresses, we have a term data communication. Now data communication deals with transmission of digital data. The form of communication channels are simplex, half duplex, full duplex. Communication channel, it has a source or transmitter at one side and a designation or receiver at the other side. After communication channel, we have the OSI model. Remember, we have encountered some terms like physical layer, network layer. All these were layers of the OSI model. OSI model is a conceptual model that characterizes and standardizes the internal functioning of communication system by partitioning into abstraction layers. Let us see what are the layers of OSI model. This is the first layer, physical layer. Then the second layer is data link layer. Third is the network layer. Then we have transport layer. Fifth is the session layer. And presentation layer is on sixth number and then we have application layer which is the seventh layer. There are a total of seven layers in OSI model. So if you have a question in your exam that which layer comes after transport layer, then the answer will be session layer because transport layer is layer number four and session layer is layer number five. Then we have network topologies. Network topology is arrangement of various elements like nodes and links in computer network. Network topology is categorized as physical and logical and some types of topology are bus, star, ring, mesh, tree. If there is a question in examination that is bus topology a correct form of topology, then the answer is yes, it is a topology. Coming over to the next topic and we have the internet. Internet is a global system of interconnected computers. Yes, remember, it is a global system of interconnected computers that use TCP IP standard protocol suite. It is a network of networks. Internet is also known as a network of networks. Now ARPANET, ARPANET was first form or the earliest form of the modern internet. Now if there is a question in exam that internet begin with dash and I give you some options among which ARPANET is also an option then this will be the correct answer. ARPANET adopted TCP IP in 1983 and from there researchers began to assemble the network of networks that is internet. Then there is another term WWW or World Wide Web. WWW or W3, it is also commonly known as the web. It is a system of interlinked hypertext documents that are accessed via the internet. What is a website? 
A website is a set of related web pages served from a single web domain. Now, if I ask you a question that which among the following is a set of related web pages served from a single web domain? And in options, I give you A, hyperlink, B, website, C, topology, then the answer will be website. Now, what is a home page? A home page or index page or the main page is the first page that usually comes up when we open a website. Now, a hyperlink. A hyperlink is a reference to the data that the reader can directly follow either by clicking or by hovering over. That is, whenever you click a page, so for example, there's a text written with a hyperlink on it. Whenever you will click that text, another page will open. That means that link is called as a hyperlink and that text is a hypertext. Then we have a web browser. A web browser is an application software for surfing or retrieving information from web. Some common examples of web browser are Safari, Chrome, Firefox, Bolt, UC Browser and the Internet Explorer. Now, there's a term in internet that is URL or Uniform Resource Locator. URL is the address of a web page. It is basically displayed on top inside of an address bar. For example, www.bankazada.com. This complete term is a URL or Uniform Resource Locator. And in this, bankazada.com is the domain name. Now, there's another important term that is Internet Protocol Address or IP Address. IP Address is numerical label assigned to each device, example computer printer, participating in a computer network. Every website also have its IP address. Now, in this table, you can see some domain types. They can ask you an examination that .gov is an abbreviated domain type for what? And the answer is government agencies. Likewise, there is .com, which is for commercial and profit organization, and edu for educational provider, mil for US military sites, .net for internet infrastructure and service providers, and .org for miscellaneous and non-profit organizations. Now we have some parts of an email. Email attachment, it is a computer file that we send along with an mail or email. Hotmail. Hotmail was co-founded by Indian American entrepreneur Sabir Bhatia along with Jack Smith in July 1996. Hotmail is an email client. There, some other parts of an email are CC or carbon copy, PCC or blind carbon copy, and draft folder. The first email was sent by Ray Tomlinson to himself in 1971. They may ask you that who among the following sent the first email to himself. Then your answer will be Ray Tomlinson sent the first email to himself. This was all about the internet. Now we have a next topic that is computer security. In computer security, there are some very important terms like computer virus, Trojan virus, malware and antivirus software. Let us see what they mean. Computer virus is a computer program or code that can replicate itself and spread from one computer to another. Then some example of computer virus are Trojan virus. So Trojan virus are example of computer virus. And then there are stealth virus, worm, malware. All these are example of computer virus. What is malware? Malware is short form for malicious software. It is any software that is used to disrupt computer operation and gather sensitive information or to gain access to private computers. Then after malware, the next term we have is antivirus software. It is used to scan the hard disk to remove the virus. Then there is a term authorization. It is the function of specifying access right to resources. And authentication is the act of confirming the truth of an attribute of single piece of data or entry. We authenticate a piece or entry 
and authorization is the act of providing the access to authorized user or the user which we want to give access to. After computer security, next we have Microsoft Office. This is very, very important from exam point of view in banking examination as they ask many questions from MS Office. MS Office is an office suite of desktop applications, servers and services for Microsoft and Mac operating system. That is MS Office works with Microsoft Windows and Mac operating system and it includes what all application software does MS Office include? They are Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, OneNote, Access and Publisher. Now let us have a look at three very important application software of MS Office. Let's start with MS Word. Microsoft Word or MS Word is a word processor developed by Microsoft. It is used for creating, editing, formatting, storing or retrieving printing of a text document. The file extensions, yes, they may ask file extensions in examination like .ppt is file extension of Word, .doc or docx is file extension of Word. So you must know that .doc or .docx is file extension of a Word file that is a Microsoft or MS Word file. Here you can see on the table some basic keys. These keys are also asked in examination. They may ask their function or they may ask that which key perform which function. These combination keys are also known as the shortcut keys. Now what is a print preview? As the name tells itself, the print preview is used to see the document before the printout is taken. In this table, you can see some control keys and some functional keys and these combination make shortcut keys for different functions. For example, for closing the window, you can use control plus F4 and to go to the next window, you can use control plus F6. Remember that we had functional keys from F1 to F12 on a normal computer keyboard. Then what is portrait and landscape? Portrait and landscape are options of page setup orientation. Now in this table, you can see these functional keys. And for Microsoft Word, these functional keys perform these operations. That is, if you press F1, it can be used to get help or visit Microsoft Office online. Then F2 to move text or graphics. Likewise, all 12 functional keys have their different functions. Then there is header and footer. A header is displayed at the starting as the name tells. It is a header. It displays at the starting of the document. And a footer can be displayed at the ending. Next, let us have a look at what is title bar and menu bar. The bar at the top of the window that builds the name of the window is known as the title bar. And then we have menu bar, which is a screen element of MS Word that is usually located below the title bar. That is, menu bar is located below the title bar. Then we have MS Excel. MS Excel is a spreadsheet application of Microsoft Office Suite. It is used for calculating graphical tools, pivot tables, and micro programming languages. What is a cell? In MS Excel, we have cells that are intersection of rows and column. So intersection of a row and a column is called a cell. And the cell whose content which we are currently working upon is known as active cell. Then we have file extensions or file format for MS Excel file, which is .xls or .xlsx. Now what is a worksheet? A worksheet is made up of columns and rows where column is the vertical component and row are the horizontal component. Now here we have maximum and minimum limit of amount of columns in an Excel sheet. They may ask you that which among the following is maximum number of rows an Excel sheet can have. Then there is a term called workbook. 
Microsoft Office document that contain one or more worksheet is known as workbook. Now here we have some shortcut keys of MS Excel and shortcut keys help us to make a task very simpler because we just need to press the keys and the task will be performed easily. You must go through these shortcut keys as they can be asked in your examination like Ctrl plus P performs what action? Then your answer should be it is used to bring up the print dialog box to begin printing. Next in office suit we will be discussing PowerPoint or Microsoft PowerPoint. It is a slideshow presentation program. The file name extension of a PowerPoint file are .ppt, .pptx, .pps or .ppsx. Now if they ask you that .ppt is file extension of which of the following application program, then the answer will be PowerPoint files. Then we have some terms which are associated with the PowerPoint. We have a ribbon, we have slides and outline panes, we have status bar. See students, they may ask you questions regarding these terms also. You can use the PowerPoint application so that you will not need to mug up these terms. You can understand their functioning and that will be the best option to remember them. Then we have view button. There are three kind of views, normal view, slide sort of view and slide show from the current slide view in a PowerPoint. What is slide area? Slide area displays the active slide. If you have used the PowerPoint application, you have seen that on the left hand side, you will be seeing various kind of slides. That bar is known as the slide area bar. Now again, we have some shortcut keys of PowerPoint. You can learn these shortcut keys or you must learn these shortcut keys because they are important from examination point of view. Then here we are to our next topic that is database management system or DBMS. DBMS is the acronym for database management system. You need to learn basics of DBMS that is some terms that are associated with DBMS. Types of database model. There are four types of database model, network, hierarchical, relational. Relational data model is the one in which we represent database in form of tables and object oriented data model. Then in architecture of DBMS, we have three kind of views that is external view, conceptual view and internal view. Then what is an entity? Entity is a thing of independent physical or conceptual existence. In a database, if we are going to draw an ER model that is an entity relationship model, we can consider an individual element as an entity. Similarly, there is an attribute. Each entity is described by a set of properties and those properties are known as attributes. SQL, this is an important term related to DBMS. SQL is an abbreviation for structured query language and it is a computer language that is designed for retrieval and management of data in RDBMS. And in SQL, we have constraints which are not null, unique, check and default. The constraints if applied to a table are those conditions which necessarily have to be met. They are used to maintain data integrity and data consistency. So let's see what are keys. Keys were asked in recent banking examination. Here we have primary key, candidate key and foreign key. A primary key is a key that identifies a record in a table. The properties of a primary key are it cannot be null, that is it is a not null value and it has to be unique for each record. Then we have a candidate key. A candidate key is a prospective candidate for a primary key. It is not the primary key of a table, but it has the value and it can be the primary key. Then we have a foreign key. A foreign key is a primary key of another table. These are some database languages. DDL or data definition language. It is used to specify the database schema. Then we have DML or data manipulation language and its example are select operation or update operation. 
and at last we have data control language or DCL which can be used for granting and revoking user access. So now if I ask you that select and update are operation of which kind of database language you can answer it as data manipulation language. So students, we have now covered all the topics under this computer capsule and all these topics are very important for your upcoming IBPS PO mains examination. And in this computer capsule, we've included full forms and abbreviation as well as glossary with some important questions in the last. Abbreviations are very frequently asked in the examination, so do not skip abbreviations. And if you find difficulty in understanding meaning of any word or a computer term, you can refer to glossary. So friends, this was the session on computer capsule for IBPS PO mains examination. And all these topics were very important for your upcoming IBPS PO main exam. Remember that in the examination, there will be negative marking. So refrain from taking chances. Also with the right preparation, you can easily score good marks in this section. So do practice more and more questions of computer awareness. And on Bankers Adda, we have already uploaded a study plan for your practice in which we will cover every topic in 25 days. Be confident and study smartly. Thank you.